Well, you found this video. Congratulations. The first thing I want to do is separate this video from the rest of my website window. So I click and drag on that tab and it allows me to pull my video out and then I can position it on my screen here so that it stays out of the way. Typically I want to drag it over to the right hand side of my screen so I can work on the left and watch the video on the right. So go ahead and position that so that's not going to be in your way from here on out. So I got that screen out of the way here so now I'm back to my stream from the Google Classroom and I'm going to click on the assignment that I currently have which is Data Baseball. I click on Data Baseball and now you can see here I have a hyperlink that I'll be using later and it says my work down here and I'm going to add some of my work. So I'm going to click on add and I'm going to start a sheets document right here. Sheets is right here so I click on that and it creates a document right here for me. It automatically has the name of my project and my name on it. Fantastic. Let's click on that and it opens up a new tab with my spreadsheet document on it. I'm going to click and drag this tab out of my window as well. So I click and drag this out. So now I'm separating my document window with my instructional window, so on and so forth. So I have them all in different spots of my screen here so that I could do everything all at once. So this time in our spreadsheet, we are going to try to make a database. We're going to use the spreadsheet to create a database. And in this database, I want to keep track of a few things. Here are the items that I want to keep track of. The name of a player, how many games they played, their batting average, their home runs, and their RBIs, runs batted in. So go ahead and fill in your spreadsheet, just like I have, and soon we'll change this into a database after we find some information. Once you have your database set up with your field names, these columns up here are called field names. These are the uh, categories that we are going to be keeping track of to be organized and sorted later. So once I have my database set up with my field names, I'm ready to find data to enter into my database, obviously. So I'm going to click on this link right here for baseball statistics. And uh, once again, if I wanted to, I could uh, click and drag this window out, resize it, and position it on my screen, which best suits my needs to find information and transfer the information onto my database. So go ahead and reposition that. So what we're going to attempt to do here is try to figure some information out because that's what databases are good at. We could sort through the information. So we're going to take a look at some of the Yankees, some of the old Yankees, some of the new Yankees. All right, and we're going to see maybe who the better players were back in the old days or the current players. So let's take a look. So here are the players I'm going to use. These are the players that you are going to use. We're going to use these players to put into our database under the name spots over here. So I'm going to take you through how to find each one and how to find the information. I'm going to take you through the first one, then you're going to do it for the rest of the players. So my first person on the list, and it really doesn't matter what order you go in, but right here I have Babe Ruth. So I go back and I make sure that I find the link on the website for Data Baseball right here, and I open up that website. And once that website is open, I'm going to look for the R's. So I have a whole bunch of letters down here, alphabet right here. I scroll all the way down to the R. I click on the R, and now I'm looking for R-U-T-H. Are you going to finish this project and get a 100 is the question. Let's scroll down here to R-U, and it's all the way down here at the bottom. R-U-F, R-U-N, R-U... She, there it is, Babe Ruth, click on his name. So here I am on Babe Ruth's website. I'm going to use my copy and paste feature here. So I could double click and click. I don't want all this extra stuff here, so let's make sure that I just get the letters of the name. 
I can highlight it and I could use the Command C button on the keyboard or I can right click on it or control click and hit copy. All right, so Command C, copy the information. I come back over here to my database, my database and I can paste it in. Now watch what happens when I paste it in. You want to paste, I'll show you two different ways here. If I paste special and I say paste values only, that is pasting it in without the formatting that the website used. So for instance, I hit paste values only and you'll see how this enters in. It looks the same font size and everything as the word before. Now if I just simply paste it, look what happens. I, it carries over the format from the website. See how it's large, different font. So I don't want to just paste, I want to paste. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z or I can hit the undo button right here and it will take that away. And when I paste, remember, I'm going to paste and paste special and say paste values only. For all of these, paste values only. There is also a hotkey for paste value only. And that is Command, Shift, and V. Command, Shift, and V does not... There it is. So it doesn't give you all the formatting tips. Command shift V is the paste special, paste value only. Okay, so that'll save you some time later on. So now I'm going to be looking for the games right here, right? So the games, I go back to my website here and I scroll down and I look for his statistics. And here it is, standard batting statistics. I can scroll down even further here and I look under the games column and that's just G, games played right there. So I could see by you, keeping my mouse over top of it long enough, it tells me what that column does. So I scroll down here and I want the entire amount of games he has played. So that's going to be in his 22 years of playing baseball. It's the last column here. It highlights in yellow when you mouse over it. I double click on the number, I hit Command C or copy it, and I come back over and I want to paste special value only or Command Shift V. We'll paste that in. I go back, I look for my average this time, again scrolling up, looking for batting average, which is going to be... BA, so I have my batting average, and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here, and I double click. Actually, I might need to highlight because it's a .342, not 342, it's .342, and I'm going to copy that, the Command C, come over here, Command Shift V, put that into place as well. Come back over, look for the home runs this time. Go back, scroll up, home runs column is right here. I can see that home runs. Now I scroll back down. 714, wow, that's a heavy bat. Command C to copy, come back over, go into my home runs column, paste it into place. I got RBIs, runs batted in now. Come back over, find runs batted in, RBI. Here it is. I scroll down to get his career record of RBIs. Oh, oh. Went too far. RBIs right here. I can also see the, the list down here. So I have Command C, come back over. Command Shift V to paste value only. Again, paste special, paste value only, that first option right there. So now you're going to go through the rest of the information 
for Alex Rodriguez. Look him up. Derek Jeter, Mickey Mantle. Here, let me give you one tip ahead of time. If your average comes out and it's like a point two two zero, when I hit return, it takes away that last zero because really it's not a, a real number. It's a fraction of the number there, so it's going to take away that zero. But I can move that out so that all the statistics look the same by using increasing decimal. So I can click here and then click on increase decimal and there it moved it out so now it becomes standard with all the rest of the numbers. So of course use that decimal place increaser if you need to. Now I'm going to go to my next player. I could do it in any order like I said before. I go back to the website and if I go hit the back button at the upper left hand side I'm just going to continue on and if I go down to the R's, there's my next player actually, Alex Rodriguez. I can click on him and I continue doing the same thing. So I just hit back, go to the next player, look him up, uh, up and down the list there to find all my players and import their information. Some players are active. They're still playing today. So their numbers may be different than what you see on this video. Do not go by my numbers. You should be going by the numbers that you've researched and you found to be correct. Not necessarily the Okay, so just read it up, know that you're there, and then continue on with the rest of the project when it comes time to sort and find information according to the data that you found, not the data from the video. So once again, I have uh, something that doesn't meet the decimal place standard, so I add one right there. Come down here, add one. And again, these numbers might not look the same as yours, but uh, these are what I got from my chart. You stick with the information that you got and proceed. So here's where it gets good, and here's where the power of the database really comes into play. I'm going to be able to sort these columns by various different ways, but I need to make a filter first before I can start sorting. Otherwise, this is just a spreadsheet with data in the cells. So the first thing I need to do to make this into a database that I can start to find and sort things on is to use this feature right here, which is a filter. So I scroll down, or I uh, hit the drop-down arrow, and I'm going to say Create New Filter. So I click on Create New Filter. It's being cut off by the screen over here, but you get my point. And it says here, I just created a filter view. Yeah, fine, whatever. And I could name this filter view Data Baseball. And hit return and it locks it in. Now you see I gained these options here on the side of my top column, which are my field names. In a database, these are called field names. And so I can start organizing according to the category or my field name. So for instance, average, I could find out who has the highest batting average. Do this with me. I'm going to click on the side arrow right here, and I'm going to sort from A to Z, which is ascending. A, B, C, we're going to sort so that it's the lowest number at the top, highest number at the bottom. Or I could go vice versa and do this with me. Sort, so now the highest batting average is at the top and the lowest batting average is at the bottom. And I could do that with any column here to see who played the most amount of games. I sort descending on the games and now the person who played the most games is at the top and obviously the lowest at the bottom. So you can go through and sort through the columns and stuff, see who has the highest stats in each regard. And you could also go through and sort them alphabetically. Now this is going to be alphabetical by the first name, not necessarily the last name. If I separated the first and last names, I would be able to do the last name first. But this one's just going to go by alphabetical A, B, D, J, J. So you can see how this will sort through the names alphabetically as well. So sorting is all well and good. However, sometimes I need to sort through a whole lot of information and therefore I want to get rid of some of them or I just don't want to look at some of them. I don't want to delete files, but I want to filter some, some uh, records here. 
So each line here is referred to as a record. So Alex Rodriguez is a record and so on and so forth. So I'm going to sort through and find just certain records. So I'm going to look for uh, players that have home runs over 500. Who has more than 500 home runs? So I will go over here to the home runs column and I'll click that down arrow. I don't want to filter by value, so I'm going to get rid of that right there. I really want to filter by condition. So I click on filter by condition. And instead of filtering by no condition, I want to create a condition for greater than. So I scroll down until I see greater than. So I'm down here greater than, I'm going to put in 500. I click OK, and now it has sorted my information to only three records. And if you could see over here, it's 2, 3, and 8. So you see how it condensed all those ones in between that don't have over 500 home runs. Okay, so now only the players that have 500 home runs are showing. To reset and see all of my files, you see that they weren't deleted. They're still there. To unsort this or unfilter this, I just go back and instead of greater than, I say none. So I would just go back and select the none option again and then click OK and then boom, back are all my files. All right, so let's just try this one last time here. For the record, let's go with games less than 2200, let's say like that. So I'm going to go to games, I'm going to go to condition, let's go to less than, and all these conditions work, you know. Less than, here it is at the bottom of my screen, it's not at the bottom of yours though, less than, let's say 2200 games, less than 2200 games, and then I click OK. And there you have it. I have two players here with less than 2,200 games. You see here, it's sorting by the games. I could also do another one, but I'll show you. I'll save that for another day. I'll show you that another time. Let's go back to resetting our document. And now you know how to do a sort by clicking here and sorting. And you also know how to do a find or a filter by filtering by condition right here. Now I'm going to ask you to filter and sort a certain selection of players and that is what I want you to turn in there. So here's the selection of the database that I want you to find. I want you to filter to find the players with the batting average over 0.300 and then sort them by the games column with the highest number on the top and the smallest number on the bottom, so from greatest to least. So find the players with the batting average over 300 and sort them by the games greatest to least. Go ahead, pause this video, and figure it out now. So I did my find and sort as requested, and now I'm only displaying in my data baseball project the players that have over a 0.3 zero zero batting average and it is listed by games greatest to least okay so the games column greatest to least make sure that that's what you're displaying and then we're pretty much done so I want you to turn in this project now in the view that we're currently in here in that filter view and you could just it's already being saved I checked here it says all saves all changes have been saved so I could close this down and go to turn it in now. So I go back to my stream. I'm going to find the data baseball project, make sure I'm inside the project. I've opened the project and I scroll down and up. Oh, there's my work. It's right there in your work category and I'm ready to turn it in. Turn in please. 